Hello my friends, all right, are you ready for that last tutorial of the hierarchical clustering implementation? Here we go, we now have the dendrogram which gave us the optimal number of clusters which turned out to be five and so now we're going to build, train and run the hierarchical clustering to indeed identify five clusters. All right, so let's do this. Let's create a new code cell here to build, train and run this hierarchical clustering model. All right, so remember to build our dendrogram. We actually used the SciPy library because it contained this dendrogram function which directly returned the dendrogram which was perfect. But now in order to build the hierarchical clustering model with five clusters, well, we're gonna go back to our best friend scikit-learn because indeed scikit-learn contains, if you remember, the cluster module which contains the agglomerative clustering class, which is exactly, you know, the classic version of hierarchical clustering, the one that you studied in the intuition lectures. All right, so we're gonna start from scikit-learn. There we go, from which we're gonna get access to cluster, the cluster module, from which we're going to import that agglomerative clustering class. Perfect, thank you so much, Google Collab. All right. Now, the next natural step, as usual, as most of the time, is to create an object or an instance of this class. And we're going to call it HC because this object will be nothing else than the hierarchical clustering model itself, you know, with all its algorithm inside. So HC, and therefore now we're going to call that class to indeed create an instance of this class. And then adding some parentheses. And now let's see what we have to input. All right, so can you guess the first parameter? It's pretty obvious. It's actually the same as in the k-means class. The first parameter is the number of clusters we want to identify in our data set. And we know that it's five, but you know, I'm very curious about that three, you know, that number three as the other option of the optimal number of clusters. So, you know, we'll try that at the end. We will see what we get. But let's start first with n clusters equals five, all right, five clusters. And now we need to add two more arguments. The second one is affinity, which is simply the type of distance that will be computed in order to measure the variance within your clusters, because then you're gonna see that we will use again this word method, which corresponds to the minimization of the variance within your clusters. So for affinity here, we're gonna choose, well, the Euclidean distance and that last parameter that we need to add is of course that method. But this time the name of the parameter is not method, it is directly linkage, all right? And so linkage here should be equal, you know, there are several options, but the one we recommend is the word method, which corresponds to the minimum variance method. All right, and that's it. So now we have our hierarchical clustering model, but of course it is not yet trained or fitted to the data set. And so that's exactly our next step here. But remember that at the same time, we want to create this dependent variable, which contains for each customer, the future class they will belong to, you know, the future cluster they will belong to. And therefore, instead of only using the fit method, which, you know, usually trains your machinery models on your data set, well, we're going to use the fit predict method, which will not only train your hierarchical clustering model on your data set, but also will create at the same time this dependent variable containing for each of the customers the cluster they belong to. All right. And speaking of this future created dependent variable, well, we're going to introduce here a new variable, which we're going to call y underscore hc. And this is exactly, you know, that dependent variable you see here with the five clusters. All right. So y hc. And let's go back. That y hc variable well, will be equal to what is returned by this fit predict method, not only training the hierarchical clustering model on the data set, but also returning the clusters to which each customer belongs to. All right. And therefore, what we have to do here is just take our HC object, because that's from this object that we have to call this fit underscore predict method. And inside, we, of course, input X just x 
right? Because we just need to connect, we just need to fit our HC object, our hierarchical clustering model to the data set, which is exactly X, but only, you know, remember containing the two last features, the annual income and the spending score. All right, so exactly the same as with k-means. Okay, and that's it. Once again, thanks to our best friend scikit-learn, well, in only three lines of code, we build, train, and run the hierarchical clustering model to identify five clusters. So let's do this. Let's run this cell and done. We have our model and it is already trained. So now let's actually do a little print to see, you know, that created dependent variable y h c and let's play the cell and we'll see what we get all right so remember that the cluster numbers don't go from one to five but from zero to four because indexes in python start from zero so let's see let's open this again what these numbers mean is that well the first customer customer id number one belongs to the last cluster you know cluster number five then the second customer belongs to cluster number four. Third customer belongs to cluster number five or cluster of index four as you want. Then customer ID number four belongs to cluster number four. All right, so this is how you should read it. And the last customer in this data set, you know, the customer actually number 200, this one of age 30 and earning a high salary and spending a lot actually in the mall belongs to the third cluster or cluster of index two. All right, so that's how you should read it. And now, now let's visualize the final clusters. You know, now that we have this dependent variable that we just created through the hierarchical clustering process. And so there you go, I'm going to close this. We're gonna run that cell to indeed find actually, you know, the same clusters as with k-means with remember this cluster representing the customers that earn a low salary and don't spend much in the mall and therefore we should just not target them too much because we want to be socially responsible and don't push them to consume too much right however this cluster is the cluster of the customers having a high annual income but a low spending score and therefore we want to target these customers to offer them some more attractive deals in order to incentivize them to spend more in the mall because otherwise the mall is missing out then this cluster is the cluster of customers having a low annual income but a high spending score and therefore with these customers you know you want to be the maximum socially responsible and maybe protect them from spending too much and potentially more than they could afford so to these customers, we, for example, want to reduce any kind of advertising. Then we have this cluster, which is the best cluster, you know, the one we want to target the most because it is the cluster of the customers having a high annual income and at the same time spending a lot. So we definitely want to target these customers to, you know, offer them the new products, the new deals, because we know that we have a high chance to have a high conversion rates with them. All right. And then we have this cluster, which is the average cluster, you know, average annual income and average spending score. And for this cluster, well, we don't have much specific to do. All right. So these are the same five clusters as with k-means. But now I'm very curious to see what we get with three clusters. And therefore, what we're going to do is try now n clusters equal three here. But then be careful, we need to actually remove two lines here when, you know, visualizing the clusters because each scatter plot here corresponds to one cluster. And therefore now, since we're about to have three clusters, well, we need to remove two clusters here. So we're going to remove cluster four and cluster five. All right. And therefore, we're just going to end up with, you know, cluster one, cluster two and cluster three of colors red, blue and green. All right. So let's just run this again. You know, we can leave the previous cells and just rerun this one to indeed get a new hierarchical clustering model, this time identifying three clusters. We can print this again in order to get the new dependent variable with this time indeed three clusters, the cluster of index zero, which seems to contain most of the first customers, then the cluster of index one, the second cluster, and the cluster of index two, the third cluster. Okay, and now I'm really curious to see what we get when visualizing the cluster. So here we go. We just have to play this cell again and let's see what we get. Okay, so yeah, really five clusters was actually a better number because here with three clusters, well, the model just 
put all these customers, you know, actually the low income customers with both a low spending score or high spending score into a same cluster, also taking the average one. And then we have these two other clusters, the high spending score with the high annual income and the low spending score with the high annual income. And you know, these still actually make some sense because remember that the clusters of customers that we really want to target after all are this one and this one. And this, you know, is something we don't really want to target, but maybe protect, you know, you know, as per our social responsibility. So this actually still makes kind of sense. And we indeed end up with the same focus of targeting these two important customers that can boost indeed the sales. All right. So that was very interesting. I, uh, I didn't expect actually to show you the result with three clusters. I was just curious to see. And that's very interesting because indeed we end up with kind of the same final marketing decisions of targeting our customers. All right. So I hope you enjoyed clustering. Now we're going to move on to the next part, part five on association rule learning. It's going to be pretty exciting. We're going to work on two new models, a priori and ECLA. And so I will either meet you in this next part, or if you want to learn R as well, I will meet you in the next section to build the hierarchical clustering model in R. And either way, I look forward to building another model with you. And until then, enjoy machine learning.